Hello and welcome back to lecture number 73. This is the second to last lecture in period seven and the topic is 7.14 post-war diplomacy. Our theme for today is America in the world. One learning objective that is explain the consequences of US involvement in World War II. And we have one key concept that we'll explain over three separate slides talking about what the post-war world order is going to look like. So the war ravaged conditions of Asia and Europe and the dominant US role in the Allied victory and post-war peace settlements allowed the United States to emerge from the war as the most powerful nation on earth. Now in Asia, Japan had been weakened after months of bombing. So even before the atomic bombs were dropped, the city of Tokyo and other industrial centers were being bombed by B-29s and the American Air Force. The atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki caused a lot of destruction and suffering and all of that was going to require a lot of efforts to rebuild. The, Jap the country of Japan is also going to be under US administration headed by General Douglas MacArthur. In China, they were recovering from the Japanese attack on Manchuria and before, the, before World War II, China was undergoing a civil war between nationalist democratic forces and the communist forces led by Mao Zedong. In 1945, when the war is over, the civil war resumes. And by 1949, the communist forces under Mao take control of China. Chiang Kai-shek, who was the leader of the nationalist forces, is exiled to the island of Taiwan. The Pacific Islands are scarred by fighting. Remember that Japan had built this large Pacific empire of all islands across the Pacific Ocean, and the United States, through its island hopping campaign, uh, was trying to take them back. The Philippines was one of the largest groups of islands that had once been U.S. territories, and we give independence to the Philippines on July 4th, 1946. So, uh, one of the main goals of entering the war, especially under the Atlantic Charter, uh, in which FDR and Winston Churchill came to an agreement, was that after the end of the war, countries would be allowed to have self-determination, that is to elect a government that they choose and to not have one put on them. The Bikini Atoll is a group of islands that is in the Marshall Islands in the Pacific. And then that was used as a nuclear weapon testing site after the war. You see an image of a nuclear weapon being tested uh, with several, art, several Navy ships nearby to see what the effects of the nuclear bomb would be on uh, military equipment. Uh, but eventually, after two tests, the, the U.S. Will, will stop the testing. Uh, there will be some um, human cost in that people had to be relocated, and also environmental cost and the radiation that these bombs caused. In Europe, we have many countries that have been destroyed by the fighting and the bombings, uh, especially Germany, during the bombing campaigns of uh, World War II. Large industrial centers like Dresden had been completely firebombed and been flattened uh, without the use of atomic weapons. We have displaced Jewish population after the Holocaust. The creation of the State of Israel in 1949 provides uh, a place for some of this Jewish diaspora to go to and start a state of their, of their own. And the Marshall Plan is implemented in 1948 to finance the rebuilding of Europe and to keep communism out. So we'll get more into this when we go to period eight and start talking about the start of the Cold War. But when the United States began to see the amount of poverty and suffering in Europe, we thought that the, this would be an opening for socialism or communism to creep into these European countries. And so as a way to keep communism out, we were helping finance to finance the rebuilding of any country that would take up a democratic government. Germany was to be under Allied occupation. This was decided early um, or before the end of the war at the Yalta Conference and then again at the Potsdam Conference. The, there would be several different German zones controlled by the United States, the Soviet Union, and Great Britain. And finally, Eastern Europe, European countries uh, would be allowed to choose their own governments, but in reality, they became puppet Soviet governments, or they 
made up what was called the Eastern Bloc. All right, so the U.S. role in all of this. So we were leaders in some of the pre-war or, uh, sorry, uh, post-war conferences. The Yalta Conference in February 1945, right as the war is nearing its end in Europe. Uh, we have FDR, Winston Churchill, and Joseph Stalin meeting together uh, to decide how Germany is going to be divided up. Uh, after the war, how they're going to create a new international organization to try and maintain world peace. And is going to be created after a conference that's held in San Francisco. And the United States will join this international organization in October of 1945. So there's a clear comparison as to how the United States accepts its post-world role after World War II versus how it's behaved after World War I in trying to be isolationist and rejecting the League of Nations and trying to forge a unilateral path uh, towards diplomacy. In early 1946, so just one year into the life of the United Nations, the United States introduces a plan for atomic regulation and disarmament, and this is going to be rejected by the Soviet Union. And that is because whenever the United States developed a nuclear weapon, threatens Japan in the, as a part of the Potsdam Conference, Stalin took this as a threat to the Soviet Union, so he did not want to be a country that did not have access to these weapons and have to listen to what the United States said uh, with the threat that an atomic weapon would be dropped on a Soviet city if they did not uh, comply. So the Soviet Union will eventually develop their own nuclear weapon and thus will begin the Cold War. All right, so that's it, and here's our recap. So the United States emerges as the most powerful country in the world after World War II, and it sets the stage for a Cold War versus the Soviet Union. Pretty nice and short recap for today. All right, we have one more lecture left in all of period seven, so please come back, and I will see you then.